Welcome to the Muscles and Veggies Fitness Podcast. This is where you get nutrition, health, fitness, performance, all perfectly packaged together in a bite-sized podcast to help educate and motivate you to stay on your fitness journey. Today, what are we talking about? We are talking about fat loss tips. I thought it'd be cool to kind of do a series of episodes where we just really focus on body optimization or body composition and some tips that uh, I've used over the last decade with my clients uh, in helping them achieve their goals when it comes to fat loss and muscle building. So today, in no particular order, we're going to start with a simple tip that you can do uh, that I feel like is the most balanced approach when it comes to adopting a low-carb or keto-type diet. Okay, so hear me out on this. This is called carb backloading. And a simple explanation is that basically all you're doing is you're kind of doing a low carb um, for lunch and breakfast. And then for dinner is where you actually add in some carbohydrates. So in other words, uh, you're doing healthy proteins and healthy fats and kind of keeping things low carb for your breakfast and lunch. And then at dinner, we're going to flip-flop that, and we're going to do some healthy carbs. I call them colorful carbs. Um, And then on the lower fat or moderate fat side of things at dinner. And I'm going to explain all the benefits of this and also why you would want to do that and why you would not want to have a high-fat, high-carbohydrate dinner. So like I said, there's a variety of benefits. Before we get into that, though, I want to tell you about our sponsor today, which helps me do carb backloading, which is our Thorn Vanilla Whey Protein. This is grass-fed whey isolate protein. Uh, Whey isolate protein is much better for you than whey concentrate, and the reason why it doesn't have all of the milk solids and lactose-containing or casein-containing particles. This is only whey isolate, so it's just whey completely stripped from all the other components in milk, which makes it less inflammatory. The other thing I love about this is it's grass-fed and it tastes like a vanilla milkshake. Okay, it's amazing. Also, thorn creatine. Uh, I use a thorn creatine. This is an extremely cheap supplement. Listen, just a simple Google search of all of the benefits of creatine. Uh, The studies are very clear. There's almost no drawback to creatine. It helps you cognitively. It helps your performance in the gym. I, f- I literally take creatine, whether I'm it's a workout day or not, just from the brain health benefits of creatine. You can combine these two together in a nice uh, smoothie every morning. We, we do that as part of our program of the Smoothie Salad Roasted. If you're a listener, you've been hearing me talk about that for the last 50 episodes. But this Thorn Whey and Thorn Creatine tastes amazing. It's very high quality. All of Thorn's products are triple verified, third-party tested to have what they say they have in them. And not very many companies can back that up. Did you know, and I'm getting off on a tangent here, did you know that actually they tested like 20 different uh, protein powders and literally like 18 of them did not have what they said they had on the label in them. Wowza, okay? That's why you don't want to buy your supplements off Amazon or Walmart or any of these places, right? You want to go through a verified company uh, that does third-party testing. So Thorn Supplements is the name of the game. You guys know who have been listening for a while. We are on the client invite list. If you want to join that client invite list and get 25% off the entire store every time you log into your account, all you have to do is email me muscles and veggies muscles and veggies at gmail just email me say hey i want to join the the client invite list i'll send you an invite you'll accept that invite and set up an account it's totally free boom 25 percent off the entire store and you can grab some of that thorn whey and that thorn creatine so let's get into the show here the benefits of carb backloading Well, one of the first benefits um, is being able to be more flexible and social around events with family and friends, but also adopt and get the benefits of a low-carb ketogenic diet, okay? Because minimizing carbs, the data is out there. Uh, Minimizing carbs helps you control your blood sugar very well. It helps insulin control. Remember, we want to be insulin sensitive and not insulin resistant. That's how you become diabetic. 
Um, and it, it also like helps you regulate your water weight better because remember carbohydrates is stored in the body by water. Which, so by eliminating, if you're having any trouble with water retention, just simply eliminating um, carbohydrates around that time that you're feeling like you're storing water will help you to drop some water weight. Uh, the enhanced cognitive function is very clear in the literature about uh, reducing carbohydrates and getting producing more ketones that are fuel for the brain gives you mental clarity. It gives you cognitive function. You just feel sharper. I mean, that's the only way I can really explain it. You just feel sharp. Your memory is clear. Thoughts are flowing. Um, also, it helps you to have a longer fasting window because eating higher fat is more satiating. And so by creating a longer fasting window and your meals are more spread apart and rather than snacking all day, this also allows you to have better hydration. And you guys that have been listening for a while know what a stickler I am about hydration. Um, so, and also, you know, it just, it keeps fats away from carbs. And we're going to talk more about that when we kind of sum up the episode, but in, in essence, uh, we, we don't want to have a high-carb, high-fat diet, okay? That is the standard American diet. Um, the reason why burgers and fries and pizza and beer and lasagna and garlic bread and, you know, all these combos of Western food, so to speak, they, they drive the obesity epidemic. Why? Because we're, we're using two fuel sources at the same time in high excess. And the body says, okay, we've got two fuels coming in, fats and carbs. We cannot burn both in excess at the same time. So we have to do what? We're not going to waste them. We're not just poop them out. So we're going to store them. All right. And oftentimes because blood sugar is toxic in high doses and that's why diabetics develop neuropathy and pain and they lose the limbs and eyesight and different things when it's really really bad the body will prioritize burning that blood glucose and it will store those healthy fats for later or those bad fats too if you're eating like junk food but the point of the game is and i'll, I'll explain more of this later is just basically keeping your fats and your proteins together and your proteins and your carbs together but trying to keep a whole lot of fat and a whole lot of carb separate from one another uh, this is an old bodybuilding technique too um, bodybuilders knew that they could optimize their uh, body composition better by keeping fats and carbs separate but you do need fats right you do need um, you do need to have those to they build our cholesterol, our healthy cholesterol, which also helps us build our hormones. Um, essential fatty acids, A, D, E, and K, you cannot absorb them without fat soluble or fat solubility because they are fat soluble vitamins. So I mean they're they're massively important. Okay. Let's go into another benefit. This is kind of the whole reason I wanted to do this show was the circadian rhythm balancing effect of carb backloading. And this is something I ran across about a year ago and it blew my mind and it made so much sense because carb backloading for any of you guys who have been in the gym for a while or you know you've been researching uh, bodybuilding nutrition, you know about carb backloading. Shout out to John Kiefer, he made the carb backloading book uh, and program and has many podcasts on that as well. But the, he never really talks about the circadian rhythm balancing effect that this has. And this has to do with cortisol and melatonin. Okay, so I'm going to give you a brief explanation of cortisol and melatonin. They call this our circadian rhythm because let's say first thing in the morning, you wake up at 6 o'clock. Uh, your cortisol rises as 4, 5 a.m., cortisol is rising, melatonin is falling, and that's because cortisol and melatonin are completely inverse. You can't have high cortisol and high melatonin. If cortisol is rising, melatonin is lowering. If melatonin is rising at 9 p.m. at night, cortisol is lowering, okay? But here's the thing that not many people talk about is carbohydrates suppress cortisol. Why? Because cortisol is a glucocorticoid steroid, and that means that it's a steroid hormone that raises blood glucose and it actually cortisol in effect how it does that is one of the ways it does it is it strips muscle mass and it's called gluconeogenesis 
uh, it strips muscle mass and creates uh, glucose out of that muscle mass. So we don't want that. We don't want that. That's why people with high stress and high cortisol, they lose a lot of weight very rapidly. Oftentimes it's not body fat. Uh, or it's very minimal body fat, it's oftentimes they're losing weight rapidly because they're stripping their muscle off their body. And that, in, in effect, kills their, mel their <laughs> melatonin, their metabolism, okay? So we don't want to do that. We, we want uh, carbohydrates to suppress cortisol. Also, and I'm not hating on anybody who does the keto or low-carb lifestyle, but studies consistently show when you look at these people's cortisol that they have cortisol through the roof. Why? Because they're they're optimizing their blood glucose so well that cortisol is elevated in the presence of a low carb diet. So how can we use the best of both worlds? Okay, why are carbs best at dinner? Well, if you're piecing this together, you can already kind of figure out why. Because if we use carbohydrates at dinner, we're suppressing cortisol at the end of the day. And suppressing cortisol at the end of the day is better for our melatonin, right? Because remember, cortisol and melatonin are inverse. So we can actually create better health, better recovery, better sleep by having our carbohydrates at dinner. But then going lower carb at breakfast, it keeps cortisol up when we want it to be up, which is first thing in the morning. So this actually balances your circadian ry rhythm. It keeps your cortisol high in the morning and keeps it low in the evening which in effect helps you wake up, be more cognitively focused. Um, it helps you be more driven for your workouts. And then at night when you're ready to relax and recover, now you can have some carbohydrates, suppress that cortisol, get a higher release of melatonin, sleeping better. This sets the cycle in motion, okay? But in the same, let's go back to the first benefit though. In the same breath, we are also controlling our blood sugar all day long. We're controlling our insulin all day long. And remember, insulin is one of the fat storage hormones. So uh, we're actually optimizing our body composition by staying low carb all day and then su suppressing cortisol and having the carbohydrates that spike anabolic hormones or muscle building hormones. Okay. And that's the third benefit here is it actually produces a more anabolic or muscle building effect. And this is called insulin sensitivity. And just to keep this really simple, I don't want to go off in the weeds here and go too scientific, but basically you want to be insulin sensitive, not insulin resistant. So let's use the, the boy cry wolf analogy here. Um, if you're if the boy is constantly crying wolf, what happens, right? Nobody pays attention to it. Well, if your insulin is constantly high from too many carbohydrates all throughout the day, your body requires more of it because it's less sensitive to it, aka insulin resistance, because over time, your body gets less sensitive to the signal of insulin. So your body has to have more of it to process glucose and this is what leads to type 2 diabetes. Um, type 2 diabetics oftentimes have insulin levels two to three times that of a, a non-diabetic. Okay, So what we want to create is insulin sensitivity. And how you do that is by keeping your carbs lower, uh, managing your blood sugar response. This also helps by things that we talk about on this podcast like um, having colorful carbs instead of white carbs because white carbs spike your blood glucose much, much higher than colorful carbs. So what are some examples of like colorful carbs over white carbs? Well, instead of white rice, we have wild rice. Instead of white potato, we have sweet potato. Instead of um, bread, maybe we have squash or berries or something like that. So those are all good examples of colorful carbs over white carbs. So what does a normal day of all of this look like? Okay, we've, we've talked a lot about the benefits of, you know, balancing your blood sugar, balancing your insulin, the circadian rhythm benefit of this, which is the, the main reason I wanted to do this show for people who are stressed and people who uh, want to optimize their sleep. I think the best way to do that is to get early morning sunshine, um, get late evening light, and then at the same time, having your carbohydrates at dinner 
and not for breakfast. So in, what a normal day look like? Well, I'll tell you what I do um, in the smoothie, smoothie salad roasted that we do. Uh, my workout day smoothie has blueberries in it. Um, it's vanilla whey protein, the creatine, uh, a cup and a half of blueberries, and then a scoop of peanut butter. And that is my workout day. So just having those blueberries uh, is a very low glycemic berry to have in the morning. So maybe I'm getting 25, 30 grams of carb um, at most. And because it's my workout day and I have that after my workout, uh, that keeps me very insulin sensitive because my workout just soaks up those carbohydrates. Remember the muscles, when you use the carbohydrates in your muscles, your muscles raise their hand and call first dibs on any carbohydrate that comes in. This is why sedentary people often struggle more with diabetes than non-sedentary people. I, th I would say that one of the best ways to prevent against type 2 diabetes is weight training because you're constantly depleting the carbohydrate out of your muscles. Therefore, when you eat carbohydrate, your muscles say, hey, we'll soak that up first so it can't stay away on the blood sugar and cause fat storage and insulin resistance. Okay, hope that makes sense. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, for lunch we have the big salad. And this is not iceberg lettuce, you know, cheese, croutons, and ranch dressing. This is a big chunky salad with carrots and beets and cucumber and spring mix and blueberries and cranberries and then we put like pumpkin seeds and walnuts and then olive oil and salt and it's just this big chunky fibrous you know texture flavor flavonoids color it's just awesome and I do this every every Monday through Friday lunch and I usually have some sort of protein with that like um, an albacore tuna or a wild caught salmon or something along that nature so again, it's very, the, uh, the most carbs I'm getting is from the blueberries or the dried cranberries. Everything else is pretty much vegetable carbohydrate, which is very insulin sensitive carbohydrates. Okay. So even after my, um, my breakfast smoothie and my lunch salad, I'm still not even over 50 to 75 grams of carbohydrate for the day. Okay. So it's very, it's on the lower carb side of things, maybe not quite ketogenic, like um, maybe just like butter, broccoli, and a meat would be. And I'm and again, like I'm totally advocating that, but I'm at my goal weight. So I'm not trying to lose any more weight than where I'm at. If anything, I'm trying to gain muscular weight. So everyone's got to kind of take that into consideration. Where are you at in your goals? Uh, I would say that going on the lower carb side of things, maybe skipping the dried cranberries in your salad or the blueberries or something like that, would be a better play for somebody who's not quite at their goal weight yet. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And then of course for dinner, now we're gonna switch to the lower fat or moderate fat side of things and the higher carbohydrate side of things. So my wife and I grow a lot of stuff in our garden. Sweet potatoes and butternut squash is kind of our go-to uh, for our nighttime carbohydrates. So a butternut squash with cinnamon and honey or sweet potato fries. We love that with our dinner. Sometimes we do a rice or a quinoa. Uh, sometimes we do some sort of gluten-free bread, but most of the time it's some sort of colorful carbs. And maybe we even follow it up with like some blueberries or raspberries for kind of a, a dessert treat, something like that. But in summary, all of this kind of summarized, you can really optimize your fat burning, you can optimize your circadian rhythm and your sleep and your stress and really get good blood sugar control all just by adopting this carb backloading mindset, okay? And, and again, this works so much better in social situations when you're going out for, to dinner with friends or family because then you don't, you're not that guy that's like, well, can I just get like two cups of broccoli and a stick of butter and some bacon and, you know, like all it is is fat. Um, and you're not being able to enjoy some of these things that people make at a get together or something like that. And what I found is being gluten free for so long, people love making me gluten free treats. And I'm like, that's awesome. And I love that they are thinking of me and they know I'm gluten free. And so I want to be able to eat those things. And so this just has really played nicely into my routine of being able to kind of optimize my blood sugar all day long when I have the control over it. And then uh, going a little bit on the lower fat side of things and optimizing those carbs, 
They help me rest. They help me recover. My sleep is better. My stress is lower. So I hope all this makes sense. If you have any questions, DM me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, let me know, hey, I didn't quite explain this, and I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to help you understand it. But if you like this info and you're getting something of value out of this, please support the show by doing one of the following. You can review me on Google. Go to Google Places, type in Muscles and Veggies Fitness, and leave me a five-star review or a review telling me what you think about the show. You can also review this podcast on iTunes or Spotify, whatever you're listening to. Subscribe, because I put out a show every Tuesday or Thursday, once a week. I'm always putting out a show. And then, of course, share this with somebody else who you know um, is also wanting to optimize their body composition, their lifestyle, and stay away from uh, all the big killers out there that are trying to take our health from us. Also, don't forget to email me at musclesandveggies at gmail for 25% off of all the thorn supplements. Again, that's muscles and veggies, all one word, at gmail. Just say, hey, I want to join the client invite list. I'll send you an invite. You can set up the account. It's free. Good to go. I hope you benefited from this show today. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time on the Muscles and Veggies Fitness Podcast.